He said it's fine to so sign the legislation. Oops. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for a moment of reflection for our servicemen and women throughout the world, and for all those who died in the last week, particularly Louis A. Haydu, beloved father of my friend Joan Sparrow, grandfather, great-grandfather, brother, uncle, and army veteran who served during the Allied occupation of Japan at the end of World War II. My friend Thomas J. O'Donnell, devoted husband, father, grandfather, brother, uncle, and retired superintendent of the Scranton School District. Mary Gallagher Wagner, loving mother, sister of the late Monsignor John P. Gallagher, aunt, and niece of the late Father Patrick Payton, CSC, a candidate for sainthood, and their dear families and many friends who suffer their loss. Also, please remember in your prayers Joan Haynes, who underwent surgery yesterday, and Al Pantuso Sr., who continues to recover from a serious illness. Roll call, please. Mr. McGough? Here. Mr. Rogan? Here. Mr. Loscombe? Here. Mr. Joyce? Here. Mrs. Evans? Here. Dispense with the reading of the minutes, please. Third order, 3A, minutes of the Scranton Housing Authority's regular meeting held on December 3rd, 2012. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3B, Breakdown of the eligible salaries for the liquid fuels account for the months of October, November, and December 2012. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. Do we have any clerk's notes tonight, Mrs. Craig? No, Mrs. Evans. Thank you. Do any council members have announcements at this time? City Council Solicitor Hughes is unable to attend tonight's meeting due to a prior commitment. The Scranton Lackawanna County Taxpayers Association will meet next Tuesday, January 15th at 7 o'clock p.m. in Scranton City Council Chambers. County Controller and Licensed Realtor Gary DeBilio will be the guest speaker and will discuss the real estate market in our area. Also, uh, our office received a response to its letter to DEP regarding Lake Scranton Road. Um, I'd like to read that response for the public. The department received your letter today regarding the city's concerns with suspected transportation and disposal of contaminated soil at the end of Lake Scranton Road. Although I'm in the Environmental Cleanup and Brownfields program, the DEP program, which handles transportation and disposal of waste, is the Waste Management Program. As such, I forwarded the city's letter to the Waste Management Program today. And that is the most recent update on this issue. Once again, I remind audience members to remain quiet and conduct personal conversations in the hallway outside council chambers. Those who wish to address city council should sign the speaker sheet unless arriving after citizens participation has begun. 
speakers are allotted five minutes in order to provide an equal opportunity for all to address council. At the sound of the bell, please be seated. We respectfully ask that you adhere to the rules of these meetings. And finally, I'd like to wish my son, Chris, an outstanding English teacher at West Scranton High School, devoted husband, and father of two darling daughters, Kara and Anna, a very happy birthday tomorrow, and many more. That's it. Fourth order, citizens' participation. Our first speaker tonight is Ron Elman. Hello, my good council friends. It's glad to see everybody up there tonight. Good evening. Good evening. In 1973, I, uh, I was in the car business with some other people in Missouri. I bought a new Cadillac from a boy I'd known for 10 or 12 years. He'd been to my house and everything. I sold the car. So the man sent the title in and it was stolen. So I was in Memphis to borrow some money from my daddy Elman. And I was crying and pulling my hair out and jumping up and down and saying, how could this man do this to me? And my father said, ex-son, because he had disowned me many years before. He said, people like Abby save their friends for last because they are the easiest ones to get to. Did you understand? You people follow the policies of Pell are doing the same thing. You just keep on, just don't stop with the taxpayers of this city. The, the source of the destruction of this city is mainly the nonprofits. I bet a one of you hasn't looked under nonprofits in the uh, in the on the computer. Nobody's done nothing about Paul Masur has had a, had grants for years to work on the Woolworths house. Goodwill has had two and a half million dollars of of state money and local grants to work on the high school. They've never done a thing except tell us what they're going to do. This, this list goes on and on and on. We're all familiar with it. But see, instead of attacking the people that are destroying the city, here you are tonight, you're probably going to ask for another raise in taxes to, to, for an emergency. It, it's just not there. There's 3,000 people that lost their houses. At Mr. Bolus's dinner, I was sitting at a table with a man that told me he had two pieces of property that are vacant. Here he, in Westside, he's paying taxes on these houses that are vacant and these developers come in here, you give them grants and loans and tax, KOZs, just everything under the sun and they don't help us. I forget the name of it. Uh, this some guy wants to build on the high school on the 300 block of uh, Luzerne Street, 22 apartments. Luzerne Street, that area is full of empty apartments with people that are paying taxes on the houses. What do you need that developer for? They have beat the city out of gods of money not paying building permits. You know, like I said a few weeks ago, there's a $33 million project down there with a $33,000 building permit. It should have been 10 times that, you know, who knows. I'm, I'm not making a blistering attack on council, I'm making a blistering attack on Pell and, and, and their policies are holding us back. You know, I said last week, 
Pell has this group with a bunch of cities that are, that are financially in bad straits. It's like fingers. Everybody's got a finger, but your fingerprint's different. This city is different from all the rest of the cities in that matter. Not a one of them has a dozens and dozens of nonprofits that have taken their their, their tax base away, like like we're suffering. And that's the source that you have to stop somehow. I I, I don't know what to do. It, like I said, I, I talked to a man in the banking business said it's just impossible for this city to get out of this situation. There's nothing good. There's just nowhere to turn anymore. But Pell is counterproductive. They don't have one positive to, to talk about in 20 years. And to make things worse, I read last week where uh, Mr. Cross, I think it was in Sunday's paper, said the management problem wasn't our mayors. This is probably the worst manager, the, the worst mayor since Mr. Hill's picture was put up there. And that is the thank problem you, with Pell. Yes, thank yeah, you. Yes, thank you for allowing me to speak. Les Spindler. Good evening, Council. Les Spindler, city resident, homeowner, taxpayer. Good evening. Good evening. Well, the city received some good news last week, the best news we've received here in a long time, with, with Mayor Doherty announcing he's not going to run for re-election. Now maybe we can get someone in office that will pick a, a competent administration, department heads that will work with council, and maybe we'll, that way we'll get this city straightened out. And uh, since I'm talking about department heads, I have a copy of the Home Rule Charter here. I want to read Section 312. And it states, the council may investigate, may make investigations into the affairs of the city and conduct conduct of any department, office, or agency in aid of its legislative powers and functions, and may issue subpoenas for these purposes. Now here I have, it was given to me from council's office, a fourth request sent to the mayor and Mark Doerr about a problem I've had with flooding on my corner. It was dated October 5th, and to this date, I don't think council has heard anything. Now, uh, according to the Home Rule Charter, council should can subpoena these people. Why haven't you? You're getting no cooperation from Mark Doerr and the mayor. Why don't you subpoena these people and get them in here? Is anybody going to answer that question? I, guess I would think that the the subpoena powers um, are used in the course of an investigation, and as you said, and an investigation would entail. Uh, I I would imagine uh, significant wrongdoing. And so this is, this is a case of um, your request not having been addressed by the administration. Now, I know previously um, the situation had been addressed. Um, Mrs. Craig is aware of this. She and I worked on this uh, very adamantly and the work was done for you and yeah. I understand Kevin that. Kevin Murphy had that work done. Well actually um, no he didn't. It was through and Mrs. Craig can attest to this because she spoke with the gentleman who actually did well, the so work. Right, but Kevin Murphy got I, forget, I think it was Jeff Brazil at the time in his office and other people and that's when he got done. Well that's that's a difference of opinion. Um, you know, I, I do know that our office worked very, very hard on that and was in touch with the individuals who actually did the work. And we were the ones that were able to get them to do that work. 
now I understand you have a problem again and I do believe it should be addressed uh, well I but I don't I don't believe that it rises to the uh, occasion of a subpoena well I respectfully have to disagree because, and I don't think it's ever going to get taken care of now with uh, because all these people are just lame duck now. So they're going to be out of job next year. So they're probably not going to solve the problem. But I hope I'm wrong, but I don't think I am. We'll continue. We'll continue to pursue that for you. Thank you very much. Uh, and about this Lake Scranton Road situation, I think council should go on. I think the signs should be put up there. Mm -hmm. Because I don't think that the Naples are correct. Their mayor was, or their, uh, Attorney was saying that they're taking auto parts or truck part or whatever in there. And Mr. Burke was here last week with pictures of dirt and other fill being driven down that road. That's that wasn't a purpose. And uh, I think they should go along with that with the uh, ordinance. And because uh, I don't think Paul Kelly knows what he's talking about. He says, "Well, he's I know afraid they're going to get sued." I don't think there is a lawsuit there. I I know that. Um uh, there was discussion in the newspaper article that the ordinance could be or would be repealed but I can tell you that only City Council has the power to repeal legislation and it will not be repealed by this council because I would not place it on the agenda to be repealed and I agree with you the signs should be posted that's great uh, lastly there was a a story on uh, Channel 16 the other night about how crime and homicides are down in the city. Uh, that says the, the pool of potential future police officers has dried up. I guess the mayor wants people to take the test and apply, and it's saying that uh, they're going to start looking to expand by two in February. Now, nobody would be happier than me for more police officers and firefighters. I've come here many times I've asked yes. for that, but how are we going to pay these people? I'd like to have a dozen more police officers. They're saying, how are we going to, we can't pay the bills that we have now. How are we going to pay two more police officers? Uh, perhaps it might be through the um, neighborhood police patrols and the CDBG monies. I'm not yeah, sure. It doesn't say that. In the story. I, I'm not sure, honestly. You know, I'm just, I was just curious. venturing a possibility. I'm, I'm happy about that, but just curious in our situation, how, how are we going to pay anybody else? I'll have more information for you on that, too. Oh. I've been under the weather the last few days, so I really haven't uh, got okay. a chance to follow up on it. Uh, Mr. Well, that's, since you're here this week, Mr. Laskam, I did put something in writing last week. I was told by someone that when Engine 15 was shut down, it was sent to Troop. Do, do you know anything um, about that? Mr. Mr. Spindler, I have the response oh, to that. Okay. I received it, and I'm going to report it okay. under motions. All right. Well, thank you for your time. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Bob Bullis? <coughs> Good evening, Council. Bob Bola Scranton. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, I have a couple questions. I guess I don't know if I have to write them down at hand, but I believe Council did receive our written request that was sent to Council to uh, the questions I had asked last week and other questions I would need answered. I'm looking at uh, B here on the agenda on the ordinance of the City of Scranton. <coughs> Are the attorneys that are listed in here, financial advisors or whatever it is, is there additional money being paid to them? Or are they doing this work under their standard pay that they're already receiving? Is there going to be additional fees for their work? There will be additional fees depending on the financial tra transactions that occur in 2013. Okay. Why would that be if they're already being paid a salary to represent, like Paul, Kelly represents the city of Scranton as the solicitor. This is Scranton business. Why would they need a special appointment and more compensation in a city that can't pay what we're paying already and handing out more money to them when they're being paid to do a job? 
Well, one of the um, individuals or, or entities that uh, is receiving a contract is CaseCon. And that is the company that has worked very closely with City Council and Attorney Boyd Hughes to ensure that the I's are dotted, the T's are crossed, and there's uh, nothing in a transaction that's inappropriate. Um, the other two individuals are Council Solicitor Boyd Hughes and City Solicitor Paul Kelly. I can't speak to the City Solicitor, but I can speak for uh, the work done by the Council Solicitor. And it is well above and beyond his duties. And I'm sure you would remember, since you come to Council mm -hmm. almost every week for many, many, many years, there has been no solicitor not since I've been seated and not since I viewed the meetings, who has ever done this type of work before for the city. None of them were involved in financial transactions. None of them were involved in, let us say, a takeover of a municipal authority. Uh, there are many, many instances where Attorney Hughes has gone well above what is required by this position, and I believe he should be paid. Ms. Evans, I'm with you 100% on qualifications and what they could do. It's just that, you know, we go out and bid a job, and we do the job, that's it. We don't come back and say, well, geez, we're going to need a little more expertise on this or that, so you're going to pay us much more. You know, it is what it is, and I'm just looking at the finances of the city, mm -hmm and with the expertise and unfortunately sometimes we take jobs we shouldn't take or not have a better explanation well, whether Boyd represents council or Paul Kelly represents the city this is city business yes it is but I think you also are aware that um, there's been 11 years worth of significant problems that had that were brewing festering and then came to fruition in the in the city and the house of cards came tumbling down well, that, and I feel it was imperative that City Council had an attorney in place an objective attorney that was not connected to the administration that would do the work of this council and the people of this city in order to check into everything to make sure that the right things are occurring and put an end to what had been going on for all of those years and I can tell you now that would have been completely impossible for this council to do without the work of Boyd Hughes I'm never questioning his integrity or his worth that work uh, ethic I'm looking at dollars and cents that's where I'm looking at I'm looking at a city that the cards have fallen. They're not done falling because the hammer hasn't fallen on the top of the cards yet. So we're not out of the woods by any stretch of the imagination. That's All true, but we don't want to go deeper into the woods because we don't have someone competent who's on the side of the taxpayers <coughs> representing us and making sure that the right things are done. Okay, and I agree. That's only Boyd Hughes we're talking about. Now you got Paul Kelly on the other hand. You know, you put two lawyers in a town when there was only one lawyer, and he drove a Volkswagen. You put two lawyers in the town, now they're driving brand new Mercedes because they agree to disagree. I'm looking at costs, I'm looking at the legal profession, I'm looking at the asset we're selling. I would want an estimate of exactly what it's going to cost for the representation or I would put it out for a bid. They are competent people out there that are as knowledgeable as others, maybe even more knowledgeable. I'm looking at how we don't continue to crawl over the dollars to get at the pennies in the city. So I would put it out for bid. As we can see what Paul Kelly's done in the past, a prime example of what he can and cannot do was evidenced by the hearing before the three judges. He had no clue what was going on. So how are we going to sit here and say he could agree to do this or, yeah, it's a good deal to sell an asset? You know, I don't want to see this go where the golf course went. I don't want to see another wayward win as our money just flies away and in the end we have nothing to show. 
And now we're going to sell another asset and another asset. What's left, City Hall? You know, you have the captain of our ship right now who's jumping ship. And you know, everything I've ever seen from the captain on the Titanic, which I have categorized Scranton as, we're on the Titanic. Unfortunately, that captain went down with his ship. But Chris Doherty, the captain of the city of Scranton, who's more than piloted this ship into the disaster it's in, is jumping the ship. Now why? Because you know you can't resurrect and save the ship. It's going down, and it's going to go down, no matter what assets we liquidate. My question, my letter here, and I would like to know when I would get a response mm -hmm. to uh, my questions that I submitted. You know, I don't want to see it go because there's questions on here I've asked numerous times. I'd like a deadline as to when my questions would be answered, since I'm now compelled to put all my issues in writing, which is time consuming for me, not only coming to the council meeting, but to go back and sit here, you know, put them in black and white again. So if you could give me a deadline when I could expect answers. They're not hard questions. I think they were very simple that I raised last week. Did the city firemen get a couple checks? When, who, how, when, and where? It's all black and white. The question about a deed to a property on East Mountain shouldn't be hard. Paul Kelly's been asked that question numerous, numerous times. There's a $50,000 offer on it, but yet nobody's getting an answer to where we're going. So if you give me a time frame for when we could expect an answer to our written responses, I'd appreciate that. Thank you. Thank okay, you. well, I didn't get the answer to that question, Ms. Evans. Could I expect what, when I could get a response, like what time frame from writing a letter to you and asking these questions? Could I get them at next week's meeting? If we're able to get the answers by then, yes. Okay. You would give me an answer either way next week, whether I'm here or it would be a correspondence back to me with the answer? Oh, we could do that as well. Yeah, sure. either way. I'd like uh, some kind of a correspondence and a response uh, next week before the meeting. Well, as soon as, again, as soon as we're able. They're, they're not hard questions. As soon as we're able to answer them. Well, this is we, the guy you want to add more money you. to, Mrs. Evans, and you want to pay him additional money to sit here and handle the city assets, I'm asking a stupid, simple question. Produce a deed. It shouldn't be that complicated, nor should it be complicated on did anybody get extra money and where it came from. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Doug Miller. Good evening, Council. Doug Miller, Scranton. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, the first issue I would uh, like to address tonight is uh, regarding the Lake Scranton Road issue uh, that was raised last week by a speaker and uh, obviously got some attention in the paper over the week. Um, I just personally believe that uh, I don't feel that any uh, resident or taxpayer uh, should have to deal with that uh, annoyance of having uh, trucks go through that part of town uh, causing a disturbance and, and every other issue it's caused for them. Um, you know, the individual that was here last week uh, provided photos and other documentation for council. And, uh, you know, Mrs. Evans, I do appreciate your statement earlier tonight that, uh, you know, as we all know, anybody that follows government knows that council is the only um, legislative uh, authority that has the ability to re repeal any legislation. And that I was glad to hear tonight that that won't make the agenda and that you won't repeal that because I personally don't feel any resident should have to deal with that. And uh, anyone that feels it should be repealed. Uh, certainly isn't looking out for the residents of this city. Uh, regarding the uh, parking meters in today's paper, uh, an article in the Times, uh, we're now sort of moving on track to bring in some sort of new technology to generate revenue uh, for the city. Uh, this has been going on for months now as we've just uh, been harping on it uh, with Street Smart and other uh, entities that have come in and placed bids. Um, I'm just hopeful at this point in time that something will be put in place. Um, but the only issue, the concern I do have is that when this is finally put in place, I want to make sure there's transparency and accountability. Um, as we all know, um, what caused this mess uh, in the first place with the parking authority was a lack of transparency and accountability. Um, the wool was pulled over our eyes, uh, things were kept from us, and we didn't know what was going on. Um, and thanks to the work by Attorney Hughes and, and others that were instrumental in uh, unraveling this whole mess and, and bringing it to light, and turning this thing around, 
Uh, we now know what's, what, has, what has occurred. But I'm just hopeful that with this new program, um, even here in City Hall, uh, and in fact in Council's office, and the Clerk's office, we have the ability to see what goes on each and every day with those meters, what's going in and what's coming out. Um, with new technology today, I'm sure there's a way to, to have some sort of computer or some sort of device within Council's office that allows us to see exactly what is going on and how much money is being fed in those meters each and every day and where it's going so that there's accountability and we know what's going on and that things aren't mismanaged. Because as we know, this parking authority has caused such a massive mess and has added to the astronomical debt that this city has incurred because of incompetence and leadership by those who have caused quite a headache. And thankfully, they're no longer there. And I'm just hopeful that we will turn this around and realize the revenue that this city uh, needs very, very much. Uh, we know we have the ability, as we know, of looking at estimates and the recovery plan of well over $2 million each year if it's done the right way. Uh, regarding the MBROs, the market-based revenue opportunity, I mentioned this last week. I'm hopeful that now that it's being put out for bid a second time that someone will come forward and that we will realize that revenue. Uh, we're looking at over $350,000 that we have the ability to bring in. We need the revenue, as we all know. Uh, you know, coming into this year already, we're looking at holes, and uh, we're only at January 10th. So it's certainly a concern, and I'm hopeful that we'll realize these things, and that difficult decisions do have to be made. You know, tonight there's an emergency legislation, emergency certificate attached, so we know tough decisions have to be made. Uh, there's been discussion tonight that, you know, we've talked about people going above and beyond. We know the people who've put the work into it, and we know those who've sat back, and they've slacked off and they've grandstanded and played the TV cameras. Certainly those who have gone above and beyond are worthy of a reward or compensation because they've done work on behalf of the taxpayers. We haven't seen that in decades. You know, Attorney Hughes has been quite instrumental in a lot of key things that have gone on, uh, particularly over the summer with the recovery plan and this budget, and, and most of all the parking authority. And the issues he's had to deal with financially, others wouldn't take on in the past. You know, it all goes back to the creativity in the city that we need in city government and realizing revenue that we need. You know, it was stated earlier tonight that it may be impossible to turn this thing around. I disagree with that. I don't feel it is impossible. Certainly looking at the challenges we face today, it may seem impossible and people may be ready to give up. And obviously what transpired over uh, the, the past summer, you would certainly come to that conclusion. But I know that when you, when you come together and you put politics aside and you put egos aside, and you work cooperatively, you can achieve anything. That was proven with the recovery plan, and it was proven with the budget. Both sides of government came together. And that's what we need to continue to do moving forward. This isn't about playing favoritism. It's not about pointing the finger. We can't afford to go backwards. We need to continue to move full speed ahead. And if we do that, we will turn this city around. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, just maybe to add something to what was just said. Uh, I think maybe some of the speakers forget the fact that Attorney Hughes saved the city approximately $700,000 in a, in a parking authority bond payment in 2012. 700000 That's well over half a million dollars. Now, in addition to that, I know it's been proposed, put this out to bid. When you put it out to bid, there are specs included. And I can tell you that Mr. Hughes has gone well above the specs. But setting that aside, if it's put out to bid, then the mayor will decide who is hired. And so I think you can assume then where, where Attorney Hughes would stand. But in addition to that, when you put something out to bid, th it seems that there's very often extra costs involved. It's bid for one amount, and then the uh, individual or company selected comes back with cost overruns, and this didn't go according to plan, and so now we need to add this to it. And so the cost grows, sadly. But that's what I've seen in my years on council, that very seldom, if ever, did a bid stay at its original starting point. 
they grow and grow and grow once the person has been hired. Our next speaker is Ozzie Quinn. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Ozzie Quinn, Scranton Taxpayers Incorporated. Uh, Yesterday in the uh, Times Tribune, there was an article where a planner from a nonprofit in Minnesota came into Scranton <clears throat> and spoke about uh, downsizing a lot of the uh, uh, infrastructure, transportation, and development uh, where we can afford it, you know? And uh, it was called Strong Town, the organization. And it was, called, it was a curbside chat at Weston Field. They didn't have many people there, but according to the paper. But I have to agree with uh, what Mr. Miller just said, that we got to turn this around. And I have to agree with what uh, Ms. Schumacher, my colleague on the Taxpayers Association, just let me read from here. We thank all the new infrastructure. We think all the new infrastructure is going to lead to growth and be good. Mr. Marham, he's the consultant, said, however, our future will be a collection of small projects. Three adults and two young children attended the presentation. Scranton resident Marie Schumacher said the talk was interesting and re resonated with her. For example, she wondered what the city instead could have done with the money that was spent on the renaissance of the 500 block of Lackawanna Avenue. And Mrs. Schumacher, in my opinion, is right on. There's no doubt about it. Uh, she's not a Monday morning quarterback. And uh, I, I started coming here in 2006, formed the Taxpayers Association. And I know that Andy Spiraglia sat, came up here at every meeting and kept on telling us about the debt. And I would be remiss if I didn't give Miss Evans credit for doing what she's doing to try to pull the city together. She, I can recall back six years ago, she spoke about the Doherty debt, to warn the council members, warn the council members. You want to you bid out for, a, for another attorney? You know, a Carl Greco, who is a contributor to Mayor Doherty's campaign. He's the solicitor for OECD. He became a millionaire. He bid out. You know, when you bid out, he's the only one that fulfills the, the specs. Is that what we want to happen? Now, I worked with Boyd Hughes at the Scranton Redevelopment Authority. He was my boss. I worked before Boyd Hughes, and I worked on uh, land use, and I worked on uh, blight studies, all right? And I did it as a pro when I worked for a private consultant, Can Do Cabot, and we put together various urban renewal projects. Boyd Hughes eventually was on the board and became the uh, chairman of the board of the Redevelopment Authority. And I know that Boyd Hughes has the ability, the uh, capability, and the know-how to help this pull the city together. And as Doug said, I, 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 I am behind his council. The majority, of, I know the majority. I can't trust Mr. McLaugh because he was here and I, and I know he, he, he went with Mr. Doherty on every roll call. So what, what I'm saying is that we got to pull together, you know, and uh, we have to do something. I myself, what can I do? You know, I worked a lot of years in redevelopment, economic development and whatnot, okay? I'd be glad to volunteer, okay? No charge to help the city put together a housing rehabilitation program. That's one thing, okay? If just think of that money that went down in Rena, down in Lackawanna Avenue went across the city. You know, in 2000, from 2000 census to when Doherty took over to the 2012, we lost 2,000. There was a negative 2,000 houses. That means they were demolished. Even with all those KOZs that were constructed and all of the other housing. You know, how, we, we, there's more houses being demolished than, than are being constructed. How can you actually 
build a city like that. You can't. You know, I, we have to find creative ways to sell this land off, help these people out there. I have people call me all the time. How can I get money? How can I get help to walk, fix my wiring on my house? How can I fix the, the, the leak in my roof? You know, what can I do? You know, I, what can I say? Nothing. I appreciate it if you would consider my proposal. Thank you. Yes, thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you. And um, I believe that is something that we need in that, you know, if a, uh, a plan or a program can be developed prior to the allocations for CDBG, uh, which typically would occur in September, and I think the applications come out in June or July and are submitted perhaps by August 1st. I think there should be an application made for just such a program as, as you've outlined. Um, our next speaker is Anthony Pamelia. Good evening, council members. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you for the, the opportunity to speak. And I thank the previous speakers. I'm, I, this is my first council meeting attending. I'm impressed with their interest in trying to save the city. And to you, too. Thank you for your work that you do. Also, I want to mention that there were two men that came up uh, talking about the situation on Lake Scranton Road. Well, I would benefit from the council's proceeding and, and keeping that ordinance because I live on uh, uh, 225 Lake Scranton Road. In fact, I'm right next to the access road that uh, was in the discussion that the company, um, I'll give you a little history. I moved there in 2008. They were working on that road. That road existed, but it was run down, so they beefed it up. They put in drainage so that they could use it as an access for their business. So I'm thinking to myself at the time when I just bought the house, I said, what's going on here? Why are you doing this? And they said, well, it's going to be an access, an emergency access road. I thought, what does that mean, emergency access road? So as years go on, um, more and more trucks are going down the road across in front of my house. So I'm sitting, I'm retired, I'm sitting there saying, I'm paying very high taxes here. I could have moved to Green Ridge, paying very high taxes here, and I'm watching these trucks go by. And to the person living on Kaiser Avenue, that, that wouldn't mean anything because trucks go by in Kaiser Avenue. But if you're living in Green Ridge and you're paying high taxes and these trucks are going by, you would say, call up someone and say, oh, what's going on here? Why are these trucks going by? So when the business says, well, we need this access, I would say to the business, and council fortunately said this, I guess, well, where was your original access? Why do you need a new access? You've had this business for years. Use your original access. Well, I don't know if I'm accurate about this, but the bridge that they're talking about, I ride across that bridge every day. The bridge says limit 23 tons. Common sense to me says, well, don't drive a truck over 23 tons over it. That's all. It's that simple of a fix. Mm -hmm. Evidently, there's something else going on behind the scenes. I'm not the business person, so I can't answer. Something else must be going on that they don't want to do that. Maybe it costs too much money. I don't know. So I get so annoyed, uh, I'm sorry if I'm losing my temper, I get so annoyed because five things are going on and it's not the business of the council, but ATVs are driving by making a racket. Pickup trucks are driving by making a racket. Uh, uh, litter's being thrown there. So I'm, I'm in Green Ridge, I'm thinking, I'm, this is Green Ridge, and then the trucks come by. So that's the ice, that's the uh, straw that broke the camel's back when the trucks start doing it. I, I could pick up the litter, I could block my ears and the ATVs go by in the pickup trucks. But when big trucks keep going back, back and forth, it's like an elephant walking through your living room. You see this big truck full of dirt, it has a cover on it, sometimes junk goes by. I see this scrap metal going by in a, in a, in a truck in front of my house. This can't be. So if the business says to council, well, that's a business expense, and I'm sorry, but we have to do it that way. I would say to the business, I'm sorry, you have to pay some other, some expense some other way and handle it. The city council is protecting my investment, because if I wanted to sell my house when, a, when this truck goes by, who would be standing there looking and saying, we're going to buy your house, and say, well, what's this? 
going on. I said, well, that's an access to a, a scrapyard right down the hill there. That's not fair to me. I paid, I paid taxes and I paid a lot of money for the property. So I thank you for uh, keeping the ordinance in, in effect. And I have a question for you. I heard that it's, it's on the mayor's desk. Is this true? It's on the mayor's desk and he has not signed it. Is that true? Or is it in effect, this ordinance? This is great. Has it been signed by the mayor? I thought it was. It, yes, the ordinance is has been approved. I think it's Does just the mayor have to sign it? Yes, but it, it's... Oh, he did sign it? Yes. Oh, well, go, well that's wonderful then. So, so I thank yes, you. So, it, yes, it is an ordinance that should be enforced. It was legally and lawfully adopted by Scranton City Council, sent to the mayor for his signature, which he provided, and that makes it now an ordinance or law of the city of Scranton. And as part of that ordinance, signage was to be posted. Yes. That, my understanding is that has not occurred. I know that there were conversations between um, a resident of Lake Scranton Road and uh, Mr. Dewar, head of the DPW. Uh, it seems to lead back to Attorney Kelly, the city solicitor, and then of course a letter that was received by the city solicitor from um, council representing uh, DeNaples Auto Parts. But be that as it may, I understand that the police department can't enforce our ordinance until the signage is posted. I see. And it is my belief that the signage should be posted. Uh, how concerned, if you can speak to this, how concerned is the council about the threats uh, from the auto parts company about suing the city over it? Is that a legitimate threat? Is this council going to back off because of that? I can't speak for everyone on council, but I feel my, my job as an elected official is to serve the people of the city of Scranton. And this is a safety issue, and it's also a quality of life yes, issue. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And it is my job to make sure that your safety and your quality of life is protected. And so I am not deterred by a lawsuit. Thank you. Uh, I appreciate that. And uh, again, thanks for all the efforts that you did to protect our property because I feel sometimes I want to move because of what's going on. And I don't want to move. I don't have to. I understand. So thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. And we do have, as I think was discussed last <clears throat> week as well, we do have major problems in Bellevue with truck traffic, and this has been ongoing since, uh, I believe, 1995, and the city has an ordinance, and uh, most often the police have not enforced it. We're working on amending that particular ordinance so that it will be enforced, because the issue in, within Bellevue is that it is a cave-in area and homes have actually uh, been destroyed because of the truck traffic. People's garages have crumbled. Uh, as trucks travel, their houses are shaking. There are cracks in their foundations and, you know, within the structures of the homes, the garages, the sidewalks, etc. So that's an equally important situation that must also be taken care of. Mrs. Is Evans, before the next speaker, I just I was going to talk about this under motions, but I guess since we're talking about it, I'll address it now. Um, I made comments in the paper to Mr. Lockwood um, when he asked about the possibility of a lawsuit, what would happen, and obviously I'll say this: I I hope that there isn't a lawsuit. It will cost both parties money. Um, I think the best solution is hopefully to get all the parties involved at a table together and try to work something out that works for everyone. I also mentioned in that same article that there may be an exemption for local deliveries. And some people probably misconstrued what I said. I wasn't saying, well, this is a local delivery. What I was saying was, usually when you see that type of signage, it says, accept local deliveries. Mm -hmm. Now, 
how you consider a local delivery, whether it's a package from UPS or whether it's 20 tons of dirt, you know, local delivery may cover all that. I'm not, I'm not an attorney, and that's what I was trying, the point I was trying to get at when speaking to the reporter was that I'm not sure if there is an exemption in there, if, if they would even fall under the law or if the law has to be changed. And, and as uh, was noted before, I voted for it. You know, when the concerns was brought to council, it seemed like the common sense thing to do. And, that, and that's why it passed council. So I, uh, I just wanted to clear that up, that I wasn't saying, you know, that, that I believe it's a local delivery and it should be exempt. I was saying that that may be a loophole in the law. And, uh, but I do believe that an agreement should be made between all the parties that works for everyone, instead of going to court, which will be very costly. And um, it's definitely something the city can't afford right now. And Thank not you. only can the city afford it, but I don't think there's any financial gain at this point from suing the city uh, for anyone. So uh, I'm hoping that the right things are going to occur and that city government recognizes and remembers that it's here to protect the residents of the city of Scranton. And uh, certainly we're not here to impede commerce, but uh, I think there, when, when another route of travel is certainly available, uh, and other options as well are available, that an agreement should be made that's going to first and foremost protect the homeowners and also satisfy the business. Good evening, Council. Dave Dobson. Good Hopefully evening. I get this in, in five minutes. Uh, okay. Uh, I'd like to uh, express uh, support for Council and what they're doing. And it is an election year, so I don't know how many of you intend to run or whatever uh, with your terms being up, but uh, please emphasize almost weekly, if necessary, bankruptcy and the negatives because there's a lot of confusion out there. And. Uh, I was approached by a person at a shopping center and I didn't have a chance to get his name. I was in a hurry. I had to get my wife out to work. Uh, but his NCC payments for trash are still in limbo and he seems to be running back and forth. So if he'd send something in with his name to council it, uh, addressed to me, I, I've received comments about my hair so somebody could slip me the envelope and I'll, I'll approach the appropriate party that we could maybe help him get it straightened out. He apparently he paid his bill through NCC and it's not being recognized by anybody. And well, if he could contact our office, right, right. 348-4113, mm -hmm. um, I'm sure we can work with him to try to get this successfully resolved. And I'll probably bump into him up at Garrity's. I usually see him. So I'll try and get his name and, and some of the facts. But uh, OK, on page three of the Scranton Times or Times Tribune today, it was announced that our commissioners are looking to buy a building on Washington Avenue, which would undoubtedly take it off the tax rolls. Once again, one more building lost. I was wondering if Mr. Chellick, the mayor of uh, Mayfield, would like to chip in for that and help compensate us, uh, seeing as he was so, uh, so concerned with us uh, trying to find alternative taxes. And uh, seeing as uh, Mayor Doherty has announced that he has no uh, plans to rerun, uh, I think it's way past time that we address the uh, term of the mayor as two terms for executives only, uh, especially because I think at after two terms they pretty much uh, uh, have lived out their productive uh, possibilities, and uh, after that it seems to get into a lot of negatives or, or what have you. I've I've seen other mayors. I don't just want to pick on him. 
Uh, for instance, the Hilton was conceived through a prior administration. They've been in town three times. They got all kinds of things, including a parking garage. They took advantage of the, uh, the uh, train station and uh, sold it off in two years. Uh, all types of tax subsidies and, and uh, economic development money. So it, it's just the thing, we, we don't need this. It, it, I think it's time for a two-term executive. And on that snow, uh, the, I think it is the uh, responsibility of the uh, people who occupy the corner. And we should have some cooperation from the Times to get that out and uh, have these institutions and, uh, and businesses uh, clear at least the, uh, the uh, uh, disabled access. And okay, now we're to the uh, Golden Parrot, which you so dearly love, AIG. Uh, there's a previous uh, Mr. Greenberg. Uh, he's looking to sue over the bailout for uh, $25 billion or $22 billion because he doesn't like the way he was treated in the bailout, which was part of our financial collapse. Shame, 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 Mr. Greenberg. Why aren't you in prison already? <laughs> KBR Corporation, Halberton, they have indemnity, meaning that we're responsible for the toxins. They exposed our troops to in Iraq. It killed two already and they lied and it was classified. They lied to the troops saying it was a mild, mild irritant. Hexavalent chromium, mild irritant. Don't worry about it, don't worry about it. And uh, that's about all I have for tonight. So uh, thank you and have a good evening. And I thank got you. in before the bell rang. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Good evening. I'm Gregory Evans, resident, small business owner in Scranton. Good evening. Good evening. Yeah. Um, just a couple comments on what's going on here mm -hmm. and what some other um, citizens have mentioned. Um, I think everyone generally is satisfied with the work of Boyd Hughes and his performance over the past few years. but. Um, more specifically, I know he's going on beyond the regular scope of his role, but who's, whose job is he doing then, specifically? Is he doing... Paul Kelly. Paul Kelly? That's, that's what I believe. Okay. Okay. All right. And Mr. Bowles made a, com made a comment regarding the, the, the additional costs, and they may be rightful. And I'm not here debating whether the rifle or not, but is there a way to to um, estimate those additional costs? The fees? The fees, yes. The fees, I don't believe, can be estimated in advance of a financial transaction because each one is very different. Each one requires a different uh, amount of work. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I really think it's an individual case. It has to be taken on a, a case by case okay. basis. Not even like a ballpark, like a threshold of a thousand to ten thousand. Do you know what I mean? Nothing. I, th no, because I believe at least I don't know how Mr. Kelly handles this, but I know that Attorney Hughes does keep track of the hours that are worked mm -hmm. that. Um, the hours that are put in by his his own personal staff, no one from city government. Okay. And so uh, that's how he tallies what his fee would be. Is that something he might be able to answer if he, when he returns, that he might be able to say, well, I, I anticipate, but don't hold me to it, kind of? You can certainly ask okay. him, yes. Thank you. And re regarding, um, regarding this, this special counsel, um, which includes Mr. Hughes, Mr. Kelly, and CaseCon Capital. Um, it mentions the sale of uh, city assets poss as possibility. And we, we know over the years we've lost many great city assets um, due to just, you know, filling deficit gaps. 
and I know a lot of citizens are upset over those loss of those assets, and I believe rightfully so, because the one time shot in the arm, you you lose you lose a great asset for just just to fill a hole. And I understand when, when it seems necessary, but is there a way that um, council can keep us abreast of what those like during the during the discussions of what assets are being pondered for sale? So. We may have some input on our feelings towards selling more assets of the city. I think uh, once the decision has been made to to put something out to bid and it becomes public, then certainly, you know, the public should weigh in. But I can tell you that uh, the sale of an asset isn't something that I take lightly. Uh, it's something that I have researched to the best of my ability. And uh, what would be selected, what should be best selected, in my opinion, would be one that is currently an albatross. And by selling it, you will, um, number one, pay off all of its debt 100 percent, so that is not passed on to the taxpayers as it currently stands, because we all know that much of the debt of the municipal authorities are guaranteed by the taxing power of the city of Scranton. So that would eliminate all of the debt that's owed on that asset. And then whatever uh, can be gained above and beyond that would come into the city. OK. OK. And um, when it comes to sell the assets, is that something that the council um, v votes upon? Or is that, a, is that determined by the administration? I believe it would involve both the executive and legislative branch. I know that I've been, uh, and Mr. Joyce has as well, we've been involved in talks concerning such a sale since uh, November of 2012. Okay, thank you. And one last item, uh, item 7F, um, Mr. Rubin, mentioned this last last meeting, um, the appointment of Stuart Renda. Now, I don't know Stuart Renda um, personally or professionally. I just know him as the former uh, business ma administrator, correct? Yes. And, That's correct. And we, we mentioned, and it was prior mentioned about the House of Cards falling. And it's a great reference because here is a um, business administrator who um, was, a, correct me if I'm wrong, but the business administrator is also deputy mayor. Is, am I, am I Not correct? necessarily. Okay. I believe the current business administrator serves as okay. the deputy mayor, but it's most likely at the appointment of the mayor. Okay. Well, that's he decides. Be, I, I believe it was uh, Jeff Brazil at one point also. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's yes. not always the business administrator. Okay. Well, that's, that's the kind of regard. I just wanted to thank you for clarifying that. But um, in, in his role as business administrator, as business administrator it seems that... Um, he had a, a good leadership role with the city, and um, as the House of Cards are falling, he was one of those people involved with the administration, obviously. And um, as Mr. Rogan I mentioned, and I support what he, he did say, that um, the, um, I question whether he should be in another um, capacity of authority, um, whether it's with the city or with a, city's authority. Uh, um, I ask that you uh, consider that too, please. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Scranton City Council. Bill Jack with South Scranton Resident. Good evening. I'd like to start off today by uh, wishing uh, City of Scranton a happy anniversary. Uh, 21 years ago today, the city of Scranton became a distressed city under Act 47. So tomorrow we start year 22. I would like to thank all the elected city officials who, who've been elected during that 21 years, and especially Mr. Harold Cross, or Gerald Cross, excuse me, from PEL for allowing this to happen. I think it's a slap in the face to all residents and taxpayers of the city of Scranton to be distressed for 21 years, and I hope by the end of 2013, the city of Scranton is no longer distressed. Okay, the 2013 budget. 
I can't understand how we can have a hundred nine million or a hundred and eleven million dollar city budget when the county budget is like ninety two or ninety four million. I hope someone will explain that to me later because I think the county is larger than the city, but I might be wrong. Uh, as far as the recovery plan, uh, the recovery plan was a sham, and that was that was exposed in the court hearing. I attended the two days of the court hearing. I listened to the four city. Uh, witnesses testify. I listened to the, to the questions that the judges asked. Okay? The city had no answers. How can you go into a court unprepared like the city was? They had no answers. Everything was speculation. Everything was smoke and mirrors. Everything was, this is going to happen. That's, and the judges picked up on that. That's why they ruled against the city. So again, I hope that when they do revise, we do get a revised recovery plan, I hope it's, a, it's one that's going to work. Because this one failed. It was a complete failure. And not only did I see that, the people from outside the community saw it, and so did three Lackawanna County judges. Because otherwise they would not have ruled against the city. The testimony was, you know, the best part of the testimony was when the business administrator testified under oath that there's 60,000 to 70,000 commuters, commuters come into the city every day. That's a sworn, didn't, didn't he testify that, Mr. Joyce? That is correct. But th I mean, how, how's, he's the business administrator. How is the city gonna go in there and defend the recovery plan and ask outsiders and commuters to give money when the administration and the business administrator and the mayor don't even know what's going on? And anyway, that's, that's, that's all I gotta say on that. How do we fix Scranton city government? First of all, we have to cut spending and we have to generate more revenue. We have to keep accurate accounts of funds. We have to know what money is in what account and how much is in that account. And someone has to be held accountable and responsible for that. Okay, we have to hire qualified and competent people. We haven't been doing that. I came in here and read Mayor Doherty's sworn testimony from, from 2010. That, that verified that the mayor did not, was not hiring competent and qualified people when he was talking about David Elliott and uh, Lisa Moran and all these other people. We need to look into this and we need to research it, the administration and city council. We have seven elected officials in this city. The mayor, five members of city council, and a, a controller. Seven of you should be working together and be on the same page at all times. Okay, we need to place qualified and competent people in management and supervisory positions. Stop the bickering between elected officials, including city council members. Reduce costs, including the bi-weekly payroll retirement benefits, health costs, eliminate fraud, waste, and abuse, or at least reduce it. Work together with the school board, the county commissioner, single tax office, state representative, and state senator. Conduct semi-annual pu public meetings to discuss the problems the area faces such as high unemployment, low wages, corrupt government, mismanagement of taxpayers' money, and above all, hire competent people. Stop using the court system to solve the problems the elected officials were elected to solve. Eliminate the high number of attorneys that are on the payroll and reduce their fees. No attorney in this, in this city deserves a raise, not until the city is no longer distressed. Actually, to respond, actually respond to the calls that are made to the hotlines. Have someone answer the phone at DPW 24-7. Stop doing charity work such as cleanup before and after public events such as first night St. Patrick's Day Parade. Charge everyone who visits Nayark Park for the Christmas light show, just like we charge everyone who uses the pool to slide at Nayark Park. And most importantly, fire the Pennsylvania economy lead, including uh, Mr. Gerald Cross immediately. Again, happy 21st anniversary to the Scranton, for Scranton for, for allowing us to be distressed, and I hope we're done by the year, by the end of this year, 2013. I don't want to come here next year and, w and wish you a happy 22nd birthday. Thank you. Thank you. Just to briefly answer Mr. Jackowitz's qu Jack question, we have a $109 million budget this year. This is the highest the budget has been. In this budget, there's a big one-time expenditure being the Supreme Court Award for the police and fire unions. And that's a $17 million expenditure. 
Also making the budget higher this year is the increase in the minimum municipal obligation for the uh, pension payments that the city has to make into the pension fund, which, as we know, is severely underfunded. If you subtract those amounts from 109 million, you would end up with roughly 87 or 86 million, which is generally in the ballpark of where the budget was last year. But that's the reason why the budget is so high this year. One, we have the Supreme Court award that's in there that we have to pay out, and two, we have the increase in the MMO, and um, that's all. And I just quickly would add to that I'm hard pressed to determine what we receive, what services we receive from county government. Uh, the city of Scranton, on the other hand, provides police protection, and it is a paid police department fire protection to a paid fire department, DPW services in terms of trash pickup, recyclable pickup, uh, snow plowing, road repair, etc. Yet your county taxes are higher than your city taxes. And as I said, I'm hard pressed to come up with a service that I'm receiving in my daily life that's provided by Lackawanna County government. Hey, Chrissy. <laughs> Chrissy. Good to see you, buddy. Ooh. Better be a big green. Better be a big green bill in there. Huh? No, open it, open it. Go ahead. You can open it, Jack. Go ahead. Got a new number, Jack, so we can have it. I'm the only one that has his new cell number. Hey, guys, go oh. Packers Saturday. Go Packers. Let's go win Saturday. Packers win it all the way. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Chris. Thanks, Chris. Thank you, Chrissy. Well, good evening, Council. Maurice Schumacher, resident and taxpayer. Good, good evening. evening. Good evening. Uh, I've been checking the legal notices, and I know one thing I noticed missing is the audit report. So I hope that you're going to be addressing that in motions tonight on to the status that. of the 2010, 2011, 2011 audit. Um, and then I would also like to know what was the city's actual 2012 operating loss. I now don't that, have that on hand, but I could find that out for you. Okay. Yeah. Well, speaking of things, do you have the uh, cash flow, the 2013 cash flow, with the new numbers? I don't have the. Uh, I don't have the last cash flow report. It hasn't been submitted yet from the BA's office for the close of 2012. So once that's um, done, I could get I could get those numbers to you as far as what it, our losses were. Well, okay, the losses, and I and I and again, I, I also would like to track the the forecast, the cash flow forecast for 2013. So I like that one as well. Okay. Um, last year, council voted to conduct a forensic audit. Uh, what line item and in what amount does that appear in the 2013 budget? Is that professional services in the uh, city clerk's council, office council wanted that included in the revised recovery plan that means that a forensic audit can be conducted anytime during the life of the revised recovery plan and it is my hope that it will be done but of course that requires as you mentioned funding and a forensic audit is far more expensive than the traditional annual audits of the city and its municipalities that are done. And so I'm sure when the city has the availability of the funds, a forensic audit will be conducted, whether it is this year or whether it occurs uh, when a new administration takes office. Okay. Well, thank you. Yeah. I'll, I'll be pushing up daisies, I'm sure, if we wait until the city is fiscally has even three balanced budgets and we get out of uh, out of the status current status that we're in 
Um, two events were held in Scranton this past week. Uh, the first was reported on Tuesday's uh, Times Tribune on the front page was an article on the Northeast Bioscience Forum that was attended by, according to the report and the, uh, the list of people that I saw that attended, 200 community leaders, actually there were more. Uh, nobody represented the city council at this forum. Um, and I, I would think, I, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't informed about it. Uh, in other words, uh, I did not receive an invitation to it, so I wasn't even aware that it was being conducted. Mm -hmm. However, I did meet with uh, Senator Blake this week, and I'm going to discuss that under motions. Okay. And and the second was the the event that was billed that somebody referred to earlier that was billed as a curbside chat dealing with making towns financially strong and resilient. Um, there was an open invitation uh, to attend, published in the paper, and uh, again, yet no one from from city, well, from the city council or city hall attended. There were, you know. <laughs> one, two, three adults, and two children. And uh, there were some very interesting, interesting uh, metrics that were there. And I think it would have behooved everyone, or at least one person from council, to attend. And I think when, when these opportunities are available, um, you know, we're grasping at straws. I think we really have to start going to these meetings and, and engaging where we have the opportunity at no cost to maybe get some help or at least some fresh ideas. Uh, we've been recycling the same, the same kinds of issues and not getting very far. Um, and then, uh, Mr. McGough, when do you expect the rental registration uh, ordinance is going to be amended? Remember you said that that could be amended to cover only the safety inspection, the four safety items in the inspection? I did say that, and I have no timetable or expectation of it being done. Um, I will, I, what I'm saying is that I have, I have not looked into that recently. Um, I will, I will pursue that in the coming week. Thank you. And, and how much did we collect in rental registrations I last year? I have no idea. No, no idea either. Okay. Um, Mr. Rogan, 408 Cedar Avenue, loan repayment. Still nothing. Um, Mrs. Craig, can we please send, I, I believe it will be a third request on that issue. I'll, I'll get that to you in writing also. And I will send uh, another email to Ms. Abley as well asking for that information. It's been months since uh, the initial request. Okay. I, I believe there was also, um, in August, there was also a, a letter sent by uh, Mrs. Evans and the asking for the entire portfolio. And I don't think there's and, been any follow-ups were sent, many. Any and re requests were made in person, and yet uh, Ms. Abley has failed to submit the monthly loan portfolios. Well, that's really disappointing. Uh, on 5C, I, how does something get to be an emergency? I mean, Council on, uh, was it the 14th of December that you all uh, agreed with the mayor that we needed the 10% added? 13th. 13th? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's been a month. So mm -hmm. now here we are a month later and now it's an emergency. Why, why couldn't that have been handled in the previous month? I agree with you that it shouldn't be an emergency. And so I was not pleased to be receiving an emergency certificate attached to this legislation. Uh, when uh, I looked further into it in the hope that we would not have to run it through three readings this evening. I learned that in postponing it or allowing it to take its natural course, uh, a number of things would happen, those being uh, the tax bills will be held up. They will not be issued on time unless the ordinance is passed this evening. And secondly, if we were to give it its traditional course of readings, we would also be decreasing the discount period, the first discount period that is available for taxpayers who want to make full payment and receive uh, 
a decent uh, discount on their real estate taxes for the city. And um, as you know, I had asked the commissioners to extend that discount period, but they refused. So because we would like the tax bills to go out on time, we need them to do so, and because we don't want to penalize taxpayers who wish to take advantage of that first discount period, we will move it through three orders tonight. Well, I, you know, I've heard it said here that council does have the ability to draft ordinances and, and bring them forward from your office. And, and I would hope when you know that something like this has to, has to happen in the future that, you know, we do it. It could have been done that same night, I would think, or a special, special well, meeting. That was the last meeting of 2012. As you know, our, our solicitor is the one who drafts the legislation by and large, and he has not been well. And I'm it is the responsibility that. of the legal department. I know that Solicitor Hughes um, has been in touch with them on a number of issues that uh, still remain unsettled a month later. So it certainly was no fault of our solicitor or this council. We had been awaiting that legislation. I, as I said, I don't appreciate it being submitted in this fashion, but I don't wish to hold up the process or penalize taxpayers. Well, neither do I. Um, and now on the, the parking meters, I, I think there are tons of questions on, on this, and I hope that you'll have a caucus to explain this to the, uh, to the taxpayers. I mean, how long, are, how long of a, a period are these parking meters going to be leased to the central parking? Who's buying them? Um, are they buying them? Are we buying no. them? If they're no buying them? No one is them? buying them. Pardon? It's a, they're not being purchased, and they're not being leased. It's a management agreement. OK. We still, I'll, I'll bring my questions back next week on that. Thank then. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Council. Good, Good evening. evening. Good evening. Um, two questions. They kind of touch each other a little bit. <clears throat> um, Mr. Uh, Bolas came up and spoke about Mr. Kelly and Mr. Boyd Hughes. And, you know, when you take a look at this, this takes us all the way back to, I don't know, in my opinion, the abuses that were alleged under Attorney Greco. And uh, I just can't see how we can justify giving money to these solicitors because uh, they've signed a contract and they're on board. And for a city to be in the shape we're in, I just have to ask why was it such a problem for Mr. Greco to remove, receive all these fees and it's not a problem now for Mr. Hughes uh, or Mr. Kelly to receive them. I, I think it just is, maybe it's just political. Um, is council in possession of the uh, Three judge panels legal opinion on the ruling on the commuter tax. Do you have a copy of does council have a copy of that? I didn't get it. There should be a copy in our office, correct me if I'm wrong, Mrs. Craig. Uh, we do not have a hard copy. I believe we did receive an email at one point of that. Yes, I know I know that I received a scanned in copy of it. Can you make a hard copy of that so that residents can come in and read that? without having to go to the courthouse to uh, obtain that document, considering that it has to do with city business? <coughs> Mrs. Craig, could we make a, a hard copy of that and perhaps uh, leave that on, on the front desk there for the public to have access to? Okay. Okay, now, I think that the residents in this city in the next election have to take a very hard look not just at this council, but other councils, and what they did in their tenure as council people, whoever they are. Because I think we have to break the cycle of political serfdom in this community, because that's evidently what we have. We recycle, in many instances, failed politicians and anoint them with the power of government. And then we wonder, okay how we got to where we are 
Well, you know, when you keep doing the same thing over and over and expect a different result at the end, hmm, I think there's something wrong with that frame of thought. Um, I just think we keep moving forward in a, in a very haphazard way. And this evening we're talking about possibly deinvesting ourselves of, of a city investment. At least that's what I took when I was sitting here. And uh, we're going to walk away from that debt. Mrs. Evans discussed it a little bit about what we're going to uh, sell, allegedly. What will be the city asset we're going to sell? And my point on that is that, look, it, we've gone forward with some projects in this city. They came through council. Council understood whether or not the city could afford to move forward on those projects. And so we did. And now if we're going to talk about a project that's just not paying its way, I think the council knew that at the time they moved forward with that. But the real problem with this whole thing is very simple. When we sell this asset, we're going to lose all of our investment. We're going to take a bloodbath. They're not, we're not going to get anywhere near what that asset is probably worth. And you know, with all these agreements with private companies coming in and doing city work and displacing workers or the authorities or whatever. All these people are making money, lots of money, and it's denying the city of the revenue. And you know, we can blame our employees for all the city's problems, but the truth of the matter is it has nothing to do with the employees. It has nothing in most instances to do with the people that were appointed to the authorities. They're just people that were given a job and told to do it. The damage that's been done to this city has most times come through this council. Some of the council members have stated it themselves. I mean, it's quite simple what's occurred here. You know, people might talk about, I don't know, the North Scranton Junior High School. Well, that money came through council, but we have nothing to show for it. We're doing basically the same thing at the Scranton Lace, in my opinion. And we've done it with projects all over the city. And we've invested money in the downtown. And then we have people talking about the great things happening in the downtown because people are moving there. But when you walk through our, our city's neighborhoods, it's a mess. People are wondering how we have so many condemned properties. As a matter of fact, the Pinebrook Neighborhood Association, I think the lady who came here last week is involved with them. And she gave documentation to council about all the buildings that were condemned. And there's real questions out there about how this has occurred. And it's, it's very troubling. And I think that in the next election, we need to take a good hard look at the candidates that are running and what they did when they were elected to their positions and where they want to take us now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to address council? Mrs. Craig? Fifth order, 5A motions. Mr. McGough, do you have any comments or motions? Just very quickly, <clears throat> uh, I, I do have one question to ask of uh, you, Mr. Joyce, if possible. Uh, yes. Do we have the um, assessed values that are being used in the calculations for the millage increases? And do we have, do we know what rate of collection is being used in determining um, you know, the revenue for the, the budget and amount. Uh, I guess my question is that the basic thing that I would need to know is that with the amendments that we're being, are being proposed, will the, will the amended rates achieve the revenue that we are projecting for 2013? And that, that can't be determined unless we have the assessed values and rate of collection. Well, actually, I can respond to that under motions, and if you care to respond as well, but um, I can also quickly add that I spoke with the mayor this afternoon about the amendment uh, and council's intention to uh, abide by the original agreement. I told him uh, what the figures would be. He is in agreement and has indicated that he will sign the legislation as amended. And that's all well and good, but uh, I, I think that if we're going to, if we as elected officials are going to do justice to this, 
um, we need to know what these what these numbers are and before I, voting on it I'm sure mr. Joyce has has numbers to report just to um, basically go over this quick in, in all my conversations with mr. McGowan it, it's been assumed by me that we're using an 87 percent collection rate which which is the um, basic collection rate that we've seen historically and that's fine but that without the assessed values without knowing what the assessed values are that we're using for 2013 it, it, it's impossible to determine what the revenue is going to be well, or the expected revenue that's that's true each year because the uh, assessments can increase and decrease annually and they do as we're well aware so it's not a, uh, an issue that's unique to this this is ongoing year after year no it's after not year. every year that we've done this we, we've had the, there is an assessment from this from the county that is used to make these calculations uh, otherwise there, there's no way of deter of determining what amount of money you are going to realize under real estate taxes you have to have an assessed value to work from and all i'm asking is what they are i'm not i'm not questioning it it's just that if if there's a certain amount budgeted um in 2013 for real estate taxes and these are the millage rates that we're going to be using then we should have an assessed value that would allow us to meet the revenue and without knowing that or without having the assessed values there's no way of determining whether or not these millage rates will achieve what's in the budget to answer your question briefly I don't have the assessed um, the overall assessed value of all properties in Scranton in front of me right now okay thank you and, and that is all I had for thank you. tonight. And Councilman Rogan, do you have comments or motions? Yes, thank you. Um, last week I made a motion and I spoke a little bit about um, Ryan McGowan and his poor performance and it was agreed that since all five members of council um, were not here that it would be tabled until the previous week. So I would like to uh, make a motion to bring my motion from last week regarding the termination or resignation of Mr. McGowan back up for a vote. Second. On the question? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes aye. have it. And I, I want to express that I wish to abstain from this vote because I don't feel that this is my decision as this is the mayor's um, responsibility to select the business administrator and this is his employee. I would just reiterate what I stated last week. Mr. Joyce is correct. It, unfortunately, it is the mayor's sole authority to decide who the business administrator is and whether he is kept employed by the city or whether he's replaced. But I think as a council, we could send him a message once again, because we have in the past um, approved. I made the same motion, I believe, a year ago when Mr. McGowan lost a few million dollars. Um, it was parking meter money. Um, this is a track record with Mr. McGowan, and as I stated last week, it's not a personal issue. He's, he's a great guy. You know, he, he's a good person, but he's not doing a good job. And, uh, you know, a couple speakers also mentioned, I believe it was Mr. Jack, which mentioned that he stated if there were 70,000 commuters coming into the city on a daily basis when if you're testifying in front of a court and you're the business administrator for the city, you would think he would have those facts and figures. Um, so that is why I made the motion. Are we still on I, comments? I or? thought we had voted on the motion. No, the, the initial vote was to take it off the table. Correct. Your motion, <laughs> that's what I mean. Your so motion you need to make the motion to again. put this back onto the table for a vote. And now we're on the question, correct? For the vote. No, I, I called for that. No one responded. So then I said, all those in favor? We said aye. 
Um, I said those opposed, the ayes have it and so moved, and then Mr. Joyce said that he was abstaining. I was under I, the impression we had to remove it from the table and then vote on it. So I, I thought right, it would be two right. votes. So there are two separate things. Yep. So now you need to make a motion. Make, well, we just removed it from the table. Well, Correct? Whether it's... Why don't you restate the motion? Sure. Because it would need to be seconded. Sure. I would like to make a motion requesting the mayor terminate business administrator Ryan McGowan or request and also requesting Mr. McGowan's resignation for poor performance. Second. On the question. I, I, I think that this is ill-advised uh, for a number of reasons. Um, number one, it's not, again, as was stated, it's not in our purview to, to deal with uh, appointed positions. Uh, we, have no, we have no authority to do that. Secondly, um, during the past year, uh, I, I believe Mr. McGowan has worked um, tirelessly in attempting to deal with the, the budget that was handed to him and, and also to deal with the um, ongoing financial difficulties that the city had faced in paying bills, in receiving TANs. Um, I, I, I think that he's, again, I think he's done a job that is above and beyond what um, any other business administrator had done in the past. Um, third, um, if you're going to use his testimony in court as a basis for asking for his resignation, um, then I think you should also ask for Mr. Uh, Joyce's resignation um, because he uh, acted as a corroborating um, witness to, to the testimony that was given. Um, I, I, I just think that we're, we're pursuing something that we really shouldn't do. I, I would just, just to respond to that, um, Mr. <laughs> Mr. McGowan is, uh, and Mr. Mr. Joyce and I didn't agree on a lot of the financial issues recently, but he's not a full-time paid business administrator. He's a part-time council member who, and I believe all of us on council, many times take what the administration sends down numbers-wise as truth because okay. council doesn't have the capacity. We, we don't have a full-time staff of, you know, that the, the mayor has, of all these department heads working for them. We have a, a very small staff. They do a great job. But um, I, on that issue, and it's not just the, the issue of, you know, his testimony. It's a track record. You know, when Mr. McGowan first received the job, there was money missing. He tried blaming it on a clerk at the tax collector's office, and it was, in fact, a mistake that he made. And then the missing money with... The, um, from the parking meters, it's, it's been a track record, and I think the city deserves better. That's why I made the motion that passed months ago, and in light of recent developments, I think it's an issue that needs to be brought up again. Just for the record, I was a, a witness in the uh, commuter tax court hearing, but I also did question with Mr. Gerald Cross about the number of commuters working in the city and I believed that it was somewhere in the 20 to 25,000 range. I, I did actually go over that with him. I just, uh, you know, I, I was caught off guard with this. I apologize. I wasn't at the last meeting and I had no, no idea what's going on. Um, yeah, I think I did vote last time to do this. I, I, I have to consider a couple of things. Um, you know, there's only one year left. To put someone else in there at this point, I don't know what we're going to get. It's, and the problem is, this could go through probably half the administration. If we're going to call for a one to go, we could probably call for a lot of them because there's been a lot of uh, mistakes and costs from, from many of the people. I get complaints all the time. I get c numerous complaints about our zoning. That's one of the big ones. Um, I mean, uh, just look at OECD. They've received a, an $11.5 million uh, findings against the city. Th those are just some of the things. Um, our own fire department, uh, you know, maybe the chief should have fought a little harder to keep the $3.5 million. I'm not calling for any of their resignations at this point. We have a year left to, to straighten things out, but I'm going to say one thing, that every one of these people that are in these positions, we're going to have to hold our feet to the fire because 
you know, the fact that it's their last year, possibly, um, I'm not going to let them fail on us. We have a, a, a pretty tough budget to make this year. And, uh, you know, I, I just think that there's been nobody that had more animosity towards this administration. Mr. McGowan and myself, I've had numerous face-to-face uh, -face situations with them. But I think, uh, as Mr. McGough stated, and, and I know I've been at many meetings with Mr. Joyce, he's probably been at, at more with them. Um, my negotiations with the police and fire unions, Mr. McGowan was there daily on a, on a full-time basis. I actually went, uh, met with him several times. We had uh, teleconferences with Blue Cross and Blue Shield trying to work out that. Um, I don't know. I don't know if that's a job I would want to wish on anybody, but, and, and, and I can't say, you know, since I'm not a business administrator, that, uh, you know, he's got a grade C or B or whatever. Um, it is hard, but, you know, personally at this point in time, I think it's just a knee-jerk reaction to a newspaper article, and, and you know, I, don't, I don't think uh, calling for one's resignation without calling for a whole slew of them is going to be a benefit. I mean, that, that's my personal opinion. Uh, I don't know how else to say it, but, but like I said, there's, there's flaws in, in a lot of departments. But at this point, I, I just don't think uh, it would benefit anybody at this point. Now, if there was a full term left or something, that, that's a different consideration. But again, it's going to be incumbent on all of us here to, to keep the administration's feet to the fire because they can't just drop the ball now for the last year. And Mr. Rogan is right in that he asked, he made the same motion, the same request. I believe, in fact, last year at this same time, in January 2012, and it was voted on. I don't know, I can't recall if it had been unanimous, but I know there was enough it support so that it passed. And the letter was sent to the mayor. and nothing came of it and of course as was said already the mayor hires and the mayor fires this council only has authority over its own staff and so i feel as if council members would be better served to focus our attention on critical issues like recovery plan budget, generating new revenue, rather than pursuing exercises in futility. So um, I'll be voting no. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? No. 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 Uh, the motion dies. Thank you. Um, next, um, another issue that was brought up by Mr. Spindler and, and also a few months ago is the issue of Engine 15. Um, thankfully, uh, Deputy Chief Mr. Lucas did reply to us. We thank him for the reply. Um, the letter states that he was approached by members of the Troop Fire Department as to their availability of any spare apparatus that might be available to be loaned to their department in their time of need. Since their engine was out of service and in need of complete refurbish, he told them that we have a 1987, I can't even pronounce the name of the engine, maybe Mr. Loscombe can pronounce Suffin. it. Suffin. Um, that we keep in reserve status for major incidents and breakdowns in our department that was available for use. We have five reserve engines and one reserve truck. This has been a practice of mutual aid between communities in our area for many years. I'm sure that if we are in ever in need of reciprocity, it will be offered the same. Now, I, I do think it is a, a nice token to provide this engine to Troop, but the situation Scranton is in, we cannot be loaning out apparatus for a long period of time. Um, it, it doesn't state in the letter, but from my understanding, talking to others, is this has been a multi-month loan. This isn't, you know, we need a truck for a week or an engine for a week, can we borrow it? This is a very long period of time. 
Um, I have a lot of questions. Is the city still paying insurance on the vehicle? Who's paying for the maintenance of the vehicle? Um, what are the, the status of the other five reserve engines that the city currently has? And I would request that the mayor and, and the deputy chief and the chief contact the officials and troop and see when we're going to get our, our apparatus back. You're paying for it. The taxpayers of Scranton are paying for it. Now, I'm all for helping our neighbors. You know, if there's a large fire in, in Dunmore or Troop or, or wherever in a surrounding community, I believe we, even though it will cost taxpayers money, we should help. Help to save lives. Help to save property. And when there's a large fire in Scranton, they do the same. And I don't think anyone opposes that. But a long-term loan of a very expensive piece of equipment now, I understand it is a very old piece of equipment. It's, it's as old as I am. So 25 years for a vehicle is a long time. But I do remember the city purchased the used fire truck maybe five years ago. And it was a very large sum of money just for a used, um, a used engine because of all the, the moving parts. And I'm sure Mr. Loskin will talk about this. He knows the intricacies of it a lot better than anyone else on this board. Um, but I am disappointed that it was loaned out for such a long period of time at the taxpayers expense and that only now it's it's coming to light so uh, mrs craig i will have a list of follow-up questions that i will provide to you um, regarding how long has it been loaned out and who's been paying for maintenance who's been paying for insurance things of that nature and in a scenario like this i think that the elected officials and the public should know that it's being loaned out it shouldn't be months later that that we actually find out that our equipment is being used um, in another community. So that is all I have to say on that issue. Next, I received a call from a constituent who lives on uh, Swetland Street. And uh, I also have some pictures. And again, Mrs. Craig, all this will be provided to you. I have quite a bit to type up for you this week. Um, and they state that every week when the garbage truck comes down Hughes Court, they make the turn. When they make it, they make it too tight and it's tearing up their grass and I have pictures of it where the tire tread completely ripped out a section of grass and the resident was very frustrated because they called the DPW time and time again um, have they weren't getting a reply they finally did I believe they went up and tried to fix the situation and they put in what looked like in the picture like a gravel mixture into where there was grass instead of you know topsoil or, or some type of soil so i would hope um that the dpw is aware of the situation and and again the council could send a letter asking that the drivers take more care on that area and and, and throughout the city um, next zoning issues i i did catch some of the zoning meeting last night and it doesn't only go for zoning it goes it seems to go for every department in this city and it's very frustrating it seems that there's certain people in this community that for over a decade have been getting away with many things that you or I or the majority of us in this community cannot people operating without permits um, going in front of the zoning board getting shot down and doing what they wanted to do anyways and it's not right Every person in this community should be treated the same. From the person who makes the most money to the person who makes the least money. From the mayor, all members of council, members of all the boards, authorities, the administration, all the way down to, to the average resident who you know, may, may be a property owner, may not be a property owner. Everyone needs to be treated the same. And this is a big part of why we're in the situation we are in the city. There are so many cracks in all of these departments and it seems to be something that's been going on for decades many people won't do business in the city of Scranton because of the permitting process a lot of contractors complain about the process in the city of Scranton that it's expensive it's a lot of work and that certain people licensing and inspections comes down hard on even though they might be trying to do good things for the community trying to rehab a property um, that was condemned or you know try to help revitalize a part of their neighborhood and they're discouraged 
I know many people that won't do business in the city because of that reason. But then we hear other people that may be doing the same activity and everything gets, just gets stamped through. Or do they don't even go in front of a board and they just do what they want to do anyways. I hope that in the future things will change in the city. Um, as everyone knows, the mayor did announce that he won't be seeking a third term. Um, I think this is good news, and I agree with what? Fourth term. Fourth term. A fourth yeah. term. Um, I, I do agree with what a couple of residents mentioned, and a lot of people have mentioned it to me before, that there should be term limits, um, especially for the executive and possibly even the legislative branch of, of government. When you have a mayor that's in there for so long, it seems that you know you get in there and, and and I do although I disagree with the mayor's direction of the city from day one I do believe in my heart that he came in on day one with good intentions for the city I don't agree with what he wanted to do but at this point it seems that it's just trying to get by and he's trying to, to get get out of Dodge or leave the, the Titanic like many have said and I'm very hopeful that a new mayor will come in and and do the right thing um, and especially the small things. You know, obviously the financial aspect of the city is, is what gets all the attention. And people are upset that they're paying such high taxes. But what they're even more upset about is they're paying all these taxes and they're not getting any services. Phone calls to departments go unanswered. Um, it's very hard to even get a pothole filled for, an, for when somebody contacts us. You know, between the five of us up here, we send out numerous requests every week to department heads, whether it be through our office or through a phone call to the department head or an email. It's so many of them go unanswered, and that's what's very frustrating. Um, as a resident and, and as an elected official, it's not right. The, the department heads are here to serve the people. They're not here to serve the mayor, no matter who the mayor is. So I'm hopeful that things, things will get better when we get a new mayor and a new administration. And finally, just one comment. It's actually more of a question for my colleagues and Mrs. Craig. Um, have we received resumes from any of the five individuals who are up for appointment? No. And the letters were sent out requesting them, though, correct? No, we did not request them. We actually hadn't um, the time or two before also since we felt that this was a policy that was established by council. Okay. We can certainly do that if you'd like, but... Um, I'd like to know what everyone else's thought is, whether we should table them for a week and, and give them a week to provide a resume or whether we should vote this week. I'd like to table it and give them a week to provide a resume. Okay, I, I agree with send that. Send a request to them. So. All Would right. I'd like to make the motion. Unless uh, Mr. Rogan would yeah, like sure, since we're on his I'll make the motion. Time. Um, I would like to make a motion to table <laughs> items number... I believe it's all seventh order. Yes. No, there's no? there's a grant on there, or there's a donation on there. Oh, a donation, yes. I would like to make a motion to, tie, to table item 7B through F until next week. Second. On the question? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so ordered. And Mrs. Craig, uh, could you please have the office send those letters out? And I'll provide you the rest um, in an email tomorrow morning. Thank you. That's all for tonight. Thank you. Uh, Councilman Loscombe, do you have any comments or motions tonight? Yes, just quickly. Uh, trying to save my throat a little here. But uh, I, I have to agree with uh, Mr. Rogan on his last comments there. Uh, you know, hopefully the next mayor will, uh, will come in and uh, look at uh, a lot of what's been wrong here and set you know the tone has been set for change again as he said uh you know mayor darty probably had the best intentions when he came in uh i don't know you know we don't agree on everything but like i of often say neither do my wife and i so there's compromise in different areas but but i think enough has been brought to, to the attention over the years that uh, focus should have been changed some direction. And, uh, and I mentioned before about zoning, as, as Mr. Rogan stated. Uh, everyone in this town deserves a fair share. You shouldn't be treated any differently because you're a contributor or you have a big business versus a small business. Um, 
I know that I know of the same problems that I'm sure Mr. Rogan discussed with some of the developers. Uh, we have people that are interested in, in investing money in this city and are being deterred because of the, the problems of, of trying to get the proper permits. So just, just the hoops they have to jump through versus other individuals who don't jump through any hoops. It has to be equal for everyone. And, and, and I echo everything Mr. Rogan said on that statement because uh, I do know contractors that won't come into this city to do business because of what's going on. That's something that has to change. If not, within the next year, it definitely has to change for the next administration. And, and I have ideas, and I'm sure Mr. Rogan does, and, and my colleagues, to make the permitting process easier, to make it a more user-friendly system. Uh, you know, just, just think of the people that, that get fed up and don't get a permit and sneak a job through. You know, it might be $20, $30 permit fee here and there. If you made it simpler for the people, equitable and easier, those $20 and $30 permits add up. That could help the hole we have in our budget. Just, just little things like that. And, and, and I'm sure, looking forward, that that is one big area that has to be looked at, in, uh, among others. But I'm just looking for brighter days ahead, and hopefully uh, we're all going to work hard the next year to, to keep us afloat and go from there. Thank you. Thank you. And Councilman Joyce, do you have any comments or motions? Yes, I do. On tonight's agenda, there's legislation to set the millage rates for 2013. I read over the legislation that was sent down by the administration. The rates included in the legislation did not equate to a 22% millage rate increase. In 2012, the millage rate levied on all land was 0.096701. In the legislation sent down by the administration, the proposed rate was 0.119909, which is a 24% increase. Subsequently, in 2012, the millage rate levied on all buildings was 0.02130, or 021030. The proposed rate in the legislation that was sent down by the administration was 0.026288, which is a 25% increase. Tonight, I'll be making a motion to lower the millage rates in the legislation to equate to 22%. This would be a millage rate of 0.117. 97522 on land and a millage rate of 0 0.0256566 on buildings. This is equal to 22%, which is the tax increase stated throughout the verbiage of the budget. As one knows, the tax increase is court ordered. The tax increase that was prescribed and asked for by the administration was 22%, not 24% or 25%. And this is the tax increase that will be. There are several indications that the tax increase is to be 22%. For one, as was specified in Mayor Chris Doherty's December 13th letter to Council, which reads, actually the letters to President Evans, which reads, I'm asking you that you consider amending the mayor's 2013 operating budget. I humbly request that you increase the property tax by an additional 10%, making the total increase for 2013 to 22%. This would allow the city to comply with Judge O'Brien's decision for the second unfunded debt. Mayor Doherty's letter clearly indicates that the tax increase is to be 22%. Secondly, listed in the 2013 budget highlights, it stated that the 2013 budget calls for an aggressive approach to current revenues. The 2013 budget calls for a tax increase of 22%. This is stated in the second paragraph. Third, listed under real estate tax in the 2013 budget, it is stated that the land rate will be increased by 22% in 2013. Also, it is stated that the land improvement rate, which is synonymous to the building rate, will be increased by 22% in 2013. Just a little bit about the tax increase. It's court-ordered millage increase associated with the unfunded, unfunded debt. Basically, 
it's one hundred and thirty nine thousand dollars for every one or one hundred and thirty nine thousand dollars in revenue is generated for every one percent that you increase taxes based on the current rate of of uh, the assessed value of land and buildings and also taking into account an 87 percent collection rate raising taxes is the last thing that anyone wants to see done at least that i want to see done but this is a court order tax increase and it's needed for the city to survive and make its payments if this were voted down we would have to find a way to come up with 3.2 million dollars which we've come up with a lot of alternative revenue sources and we're pretty much tapped out at this point plus we must do this to fulfill the court order moving on to other matters earlier i attended an exa conference for the 2011 draft audit which was prepared by rossi and rossi the audit that was prepared by rossi and rossi was marked as tentative and preliminary and subject to change in the exa conference assets and liabilities were reviewed as well as the statement of revenues expenditures and changes in fund deficit copies of the tentative audit were prepared by rossi and rossi today and submitted to business administrator ryan mcgowan if there are any changes to be made to the audit they will be made before the final audit is distributed since i have not received the draft audit before tonight's meeting I have not yet had a chance to review its contents the uh, draft audits were not yet distributed at least not to council members once I review the contents of the audit I'll inform the public more regarding the amount of debt of the city of Scranton also once the final copy of the audit is available for the public I will also advise I'm assuming that the final copy of the audit will be ra or ready rather quickly if there are no alterations. Moving on, um, as one knows, when a, a market-based revenue opportunities program was put out to bid, there were no bidders. The market-based revenue or revenue opportunities program was a suggestion of Pell and an important part of the budget and revised recovery plan. Scranton City Council has received notification that the market-based revenue opportunities program has been put out for rebid. Proposals will be opened in council chambers on Tuesday, January 22nd. Just to give everyone an update on that. Moving along, Scranton City Council has received a report from Northeast Revenue regarding delinquent real estate tax collected and distributed taxes. As one may or may not know, Northeast Revenue collects and distributes all delinquent real estate taxes, which, with the exception of delinquent prior year real estate taxes, which are collected and distributed by the single tax office. For the period of December 1st to December 31st, the amount of revenue that Northeast Revenue collected and distributed to the city of Scranton was $56,537.69. Northeast Revenue did not distribute any funds to Penn Star Bank for the collection of 2004, 5, and 6 delinquent real estate taxes. The defaulted uh, Scranton Redevelopment Authority loan payment to Penn Star Bank has finally been paid off, and no further payments from the city of Scranton are required, meaning that the collection of 2004, 5, and 6 delinquent real estate taxes will now be realized by the city of Scranton. Northeast Revenue has also co collected and distributed $119,820.86 in delinquent refuse payments for the period of December 1st to December 31st. And finally, I have a few citizens' requests. The first uh, pertains to the 100 and 200 block of North Everett Avenue. Residents of the 100 and 200 block of North Everett Avenue have informed me that the conditions of these two blocks is subpar, as there are many potholes and cracks in the road. Residents request that potholes on these blocks be patched as travel conditions are rough. 
With this in mind, Mrs. Craig, please contact Director Dewar and ask him to handle this program or problem in the best way that he sees fit. Various Manuka residents have reported to me that the condition of Kane Street is subpar as there are various potholes in the road making travel conditions rough. Uh, Mrs. Craig, if you could please add this to the list of items to contact Director Dewar about, and that is it. Thank you. Uh, good evening. Much of what I was going to say this evening has already been covered by our finance chair. And so all that I can add to that topic is that the 2013 bond payment for the second unfunded debt of 2012 was already made in December 2012, according to Mayor Doherty. Since the amount of money borrowed was less than the prior 2012 unfunded debt and the interest rate was lower, the increase was cut from 12% to 10%. Thus, because the payment was already made for 2013 and the costs are lower, there appears to be no need for the additional increases beyond the 22% that was agreed upon and included in the 2013 budget. As a result, Council will vote to amend the legislation and include the correct millage rates, which reflect a 22% increase for land and buildings during tonight's meeting. And as I indicated earlier, I also spoke with the mayor this afternoon. He agreed to council's amendment and stated that he would sign the legislation as amended. Now, with regard to the uh, second unfunded debt and the fact that I mentioned that the 2013 payment has already been made, I had a discussion with uh, our council solicitor regarding just this situation. And uh, it is his belief that the uh, taxes collected for payment of the second unfunded debt would go into a sinking fund this year, and they would be then applied toward the 2014 debt payment. Um, I was also going to report on the response we received from Ch uh, Deputy Chief Al Lucas, but Mr. Rogan has taken care of that. And um, I think there is another response, though, that we can report uh, with regard to a question that was posed last week by a council speaker. Additional arbitration award payments were made recently to Scranton police and fire employees. Um, I learned that payments were made for a health care arbitration award dating back to 2010, which was won by the IAFF and FOP. Approximately 162000 was paid to the IAFF and 199000 to the FOP for the health care award. The second payment was for the SIT arbitration award to the FOP in the amount of $1.4 million. These awards were won by the unions for clear-cut contract violations. Earlier this week, I met with Senator, or I should say State Senator John Blake and members of his staff once again. The Senator outlined his ideas to assist Scranton as it faces ongoing financial challenges. For example, he remains committed to a 1% countywide sales tax that would be shared with municipalities and is hopeful that it may obtain approval this year. We also shared our research regarding a payroll tax that would replace the business privilege and mercantile taxes and provide lower taxes for small business and tax levies for large business, such as banks, and for profit portions of tax exempts. If Senator Blake should determine a lack of support for implementation of this tax in Scranton, then, in my opinion, it appears that Scranton should pursue reclassification to a third-class city. If legislation that pertains solely to the city of Scranton cannot be adopted by the state legislature, 
There is no compelling reason to remain a Class 2A city since our population numbers, according to both the 2000 and 2010 census and certified by the governor of Pennsylvania, no longer qualify Scranton as a Class 2A city. Further, the change to a third class municipality would seem to strengthen Scranton's ability to enact a commuter tax for 2014. The Senator's office will keep me apprised of developments or lack thereof. And that's it. 5B, Ordinance of the City of Scranton, Lackawanna County, Pennsylvania, appointing W. Boyd Hughes, Esquire, and Paul A. Kelly, Jr., Esquire, as special counsel to the City of Scranton, and Case Con Capital, Incorporated, as financial advisor to the City of Scranton, on the issuance, sale, and placement of any bonds and or notes for the financing of the City of Scranton's unfunded debt and any transaction involving the sale leaseback of city assets, any transactions involving the sale or lease of any authority assets, which reduces the City of Scranton's bond indebtedness under the Unit Debt Act, or results in the payment or loan of money by any authority to the City of Scranton the refinancing or refunding of any of the city's outstanding bond issues and any 2013 tax anticipating notes other than the 2013 TAN Note A and authorizing the mayor and other appropriate city officials to execute a contract with CaseCon Capital Incorporated. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5B be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question? All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 5C, amending file of council number 100, 1976, entitled an ordinance as amended, levying general and special taxes for the fiscal year 1977 by setting the millage for the year 2013. Emergency certificate attached. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5C be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question? Yes. I, uh, I, I still have questions about whether the, the millage um, will achieve, well, we haven't amended it yet, but if we, when it's amended, whether it will achieve the uh, required amount for the budget. And um, I will certainly, I, I vote to introduce this, but I don't think that we should vote to move it into sixth and seventh order. I would just state I actually <laughs> actually kind of feel the almost the exact opposite. On I understand I did talk to um, Mayor Courtright or tax collector Courtright this morning. <laughs> getting in slip. I'm, I'm getting into <laughs> myself um, about the discount period and about the tax bills needing to go out and I do understand that. Um, again I voted against a number of these issues just because I, I disagreed with with much of what was in the budget that's where my opposition comes from um, in it I will support mr. Joyce's amendment though and that does come up for a vote because it is a, in, a decrease on the tax increase all those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye aye, aye. aye. opposed no the ayes have it and so moved 5C, I make a motion to suspend the rules to move item 5C to 6th and 7th order to be considered for final passage based on the attached emergency certificate. Second. On the question, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No. The ayes have it and so moved. 6A, formerly 5C. Reading by title, file of council number one, 2013, an ordinance, amending file of the council number 100, 1976, entitled, an ordinance as amended, levying general and special taxes for the fiscal year 1977 by setting the millage for the year 2013, emergency certificate attached. <coughs> You've heard reading by title of item 6A. What is your pleasure? I make a motion to amend item 6A per the following amendments. I make a motion to amend item 6A as per the following. Number one, 
section one, line 13, after levying on all land to leave point one one nine nine oh nine and insert point one one seven nine seven five. Line 14, after levy on buildings, delete point oh two six two eight eight and insert point oh two five six five six. Line 15, delete 19 and insert 17. Line 16, delete point nine oh nine cents in parentheses $119.909 and insert .975 cents uh, in parentheses $117 or $117.975. Line 17, delete 26 and insert 25. Delete 20 or .288 cents, 26.288 in parentheses and insert 0.656 cents in parentheses 25.656. Second. On the question, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No. The ayes have it and so moved. I move that item 6A as amended past reading by title. We have a motion on the floor. Do we have a second? A second. On the question? Okay. Yes. Uh, once again, I, I, I will restate that um, with these amendments, without knowing what the assessed values are that are being used for the calculations, there's absolutely no way to determine whether these millage rates will, will realize the budgeted amount for real estate taxes in 2013. And without that information, I think it's impossible to vote on this. Well, I, I'm just going to reiterate quickly, and then I'll go to you, Mr. Joyce, that um, the first unfunded debt, these tax increases are to fund court-ordered millage rate increases for repayment of the first and second unfunded debt proceedings of 2012. It was determined well in advance that by Mr. McGowan that 12% would cover the first unfunded debt repayments. As for the second one, as I said, it has already been made for 2013. The 10 percent collected, whether, and of course we all know, 100 percent of taxes are never collected. That's why we have delinquent taxes. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that we should be uh, uh, penalizing people who pay their taxes on time by increasing them uh, above what was agreed to, uh, to cover for people who don't pay their taxes. But again, the 2013 payment was made. This is going to be a sinking fund toward a 2014 payment. And the, the issue of a real estate tax increase will be voted on once again next year and the following year uh, forever and ever, amen. So this amount doesn't stay in effect permanently. And more than that, the second unfunded debt payment has already been made, and this is, this is to comply with the court order and to set the money aside so that the budget is in better shape for 2014, and that payment you know, is going to be largely available to be made. And, and I'm not arguing you know, the, the tax increase, and I understand the amount, the 22% the versus the 24. I asked the question back when we were doing the budget, whether we were using, whether the percentage was based on re the revenue or the millage. And, um, and I, I think the answer I received was both. Well, it can't be both. If you're going to use the percentage on revenue, the, the percentage on millage is going to be higher. And we argued this a year ago. Um, uh, my, my point is, is only that there's a certain budgeted amount for 2013. And I think that what we're voting on tonight um, is not going to allow us to realize that. And I think that that's a mistake that needs to be rectified. 
and that was my that's my only idea. Just to uh, clarify, the 22% increase is a 22% millage increase. It's stated explicitly in the budget. It's not uh, a 22% revenue increase. That's all. Okay. All those in favor? Yeah. Signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No. no. The ayes have it and so moved. Is there anyone who wishes to address council on item 7G, formerly <coughs> 6A, as amended? Uh, yes, I do, and I hope uh, Mr. McGough doesn't get hurt when he gets when he faints from my saying I agree with him, uh, because specifically the uh, I mean I believe that the court order was for to cover to increase the real estate taxes to cover the payments, and so it's not a percent of the millage; it's the percent of millage required to cover the, that payment of that bond for 10 years. And I think we're in a pretty precarious position uh, already going in. Uh, we've got what general obligation debt service payments of, let's see, 9, 4, 9, 13, what about 14, 14 million right now. And what, uh, Mr. Joyce, do you happen to recall what our, our total revenue is from real estate on an annual basis? Um, currently or just or roughly without well, the tax increases without the tax increases without the tax increases it's 13 point um, 9 million I believe okay so see I mean our, right now we're in a position where most of our real estate taxes are going to go to cover our debt payments uh, servicing our debt so it does become critical because I'm not sure, and maybe Mr. Joyce can clear it up, but I recall at that second unfunded uh, debt hearing, Mr. McGowan was asked about how much leverage we had as far as reaching our unit debt act ceiling. And I believe we are very, very close to that. And if we go for the, the sale lease back, we're gonna hit that ceiling. So we, we're not gonna be able to go out to get more money. And unless it's in this budget to cover those payments, we're still going to be uh, out of compliance with the court order. So I, I think you do need to look at the, what, the, what the collection rate is assumed, especially since it's going up roughly, let's say, 22%. If that's going to decrease the, the collection rate from, I think we've been using 87, if that's going to drop it down a little bit, and what the actual assessments are in both land and improvements. So we see if we've got enough money to cover those. Uh, I mean, we're, we're cutting this per, all of it pretty close to the wire. And with a lot of the other unknowns that are still in the budget for revenue, I, I don't think you can afford to, to mess this one up. I mean, I think people who are gonna take advantage of the, of the discount period uh, pretty much know. I mean, 22%, they can do it, or 25%, or whatever. They pretty much know what they're going to have to come up with, and the only thing they don't know is the date. And do you know the date? Is it going to be the end of February? I don't know the date offhand. Okay. Thanks. But, I mean, I, I really think it's it's much more critical this year that you do have that those figures and what the amounts are when you apply the millage. So... That's my two cents. Thank you. Thank you. Seventh order, 7A, for consideration by the Committee on Finance for adoption, resolution number one, 2013, accepting a $100 donation from NEI Ambulatory Surgery Incorporated, presented to the City of Scranton Fire Department. What is the recommendation of the Chair for the Committee on Finance? As Chair for the Committee on Finance, I recommend final passage of item 7A. Second. On the question? Roll call, please. Mr. McGough? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Loscombe? Yes. 
Mr. Joyce? Yes. Mrs. Evans? Yes. I hereby declare item 7A legally and lawfully adopted. There has been a prior motion to table 7B through G. Excuse me, through F. 7F. Mm -hmm. F. 7G, formerly 6A, for adoption, for consideration by the Committee on Finance, for adoption, file of Council number 1, 2013, as amended, amending file of Council number 100, 1976, entitled, an ordinance, as amended, levying general and special taxes for the fiscal year 1977 by setting the millage for the year 2013, emergency certificate attached. What is the recommendation of the chair for the Committee on Finance? As chairperson for the Committee on Finance, I recommend final passage of item 7G as amended. Second. On the question. Um, the only thing I would add to this is, you know, as Mr. Joyce said, I'm sure there's no one, no one who feels comfortable with this, who is pleased to raise taxes. But this tax increase is necessary to pay for the two unfunded debt issues of 2012. They have been ordered by two different judges. And anyone who votes no to this is in fact saying no to the judge's order and saying that you don't believe it has to be repaid because, for example, if everyone on council were to do that, then what would happen? There would be, be no real estate taxes for 2013. At this and point. this, and obviously the city would collapse, it would and collapse. the uh, the judge's orders would have been violated. So I do believe that, you know, we, some of us anyway, or most of us, maybe all of us, need to do the responsible thing and comply with the court order. Uh, that's a gross mis misinterpretation and misrepresentation of what was, has been said. Disagreement is with the millage rate. Nobody has, nobody has disagreed with paying or, or providing for the payment of, of anything. Um, I believe, actually I believe that we're doing an injustice to what we've already voted upon. We, we've already voted for a certain revenue item in a budget and I don't believe that with this millage we are going to achieve it. And, and that is all that I stated. It has nothing to do with approving or disapproving of a court order. Um, this could easily have been um, voted on to introduce this week and take a look at the at the um, assessment rates and, and vote on it next week for final passage and again these are the numbers included in the 2013 budget is there anyone else on the question roll call please mr. McGough no mr. Rogan no Mr. Loscombe? Yes. Mr. Joyce? Yes. Mrs. Evans? Yes. I hereby declare item 7G as amended, legally and lawfully adopted. Uh, if there is no further business, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. This meeting is adjourned. And I do thank the audience members tonight for their cooperation in this evening's meeting.